Hey everyone, this is Ronan. Welcome back to another DCS Huey tutorial. I'm going to be going over some really basic emergency procedures today. Nothing too advanced, and if you need more information on some of these concepts that I talk about, there's plenty of good videos out there. Since I'm not very good at it, and frankly haven't really been able to do it very successfully, I'm not going to go over auto rotations in this tutorial. We can do auto rotations at a later date once I'm more proficient, or there's plenty of other videos out there that discuss how to perform an auto rotation, which is basically using the already spinning rotors to control the helicopter down to the ground in the event of a power loss from the engine shutting off for some reason or another. So first things first, you want to avoid mast bumping. Basically what mast bumping is, is where the rotor blades move too far forward or backwards or side to side and can strike the tail of the aircraft or the cockpit. Or, as even worse, the rotor can detach the rotor system itself can detach from the mast and basically you lose the one thing that keeps you airborne. So to avoid mass bumping, you want to avoid any e extreme inputs to the right, left, forward, or backwards to overstress the main rotor system. Next, let's talk about turning. Now you'll notice here that I've got this instrument right here with a ball in it and an arrow pointing at these different hash marks that is your attitude indicator. It's a gyroscopic instrument that measures the different angles that you are experiencing during flight. As I pull pitch back on the cyclic, you'll notice that the black starts to move down and the white starts to move up. That black and white border there, that is your horizon. If you keep the little wings of the white marks pretty much straight and level here, that's straight and level flight. Now as I turn to the left, you'll see that the ball moves to the right to different hash marks. And if I bank the opposite direction, it does the same thing. You want to avoid any extreme turning, especially while flying, such as turning completely sideways. The main rudder blades are no longer the main source of lift, and that little tiny tail rotor can't compensate to keep the helicopter lifted and airborne, and you will lose altitude. Even if you put a lot of input into that tail rotor, it's still not going to keep you airborne. So avoid any heavy turns like that. That can also lead to other failures. Now, one of the most important key things that, I've ex that I experienced when I was first learning to fly is on your approach for landing, which we'll go over landing in a later video. As you approach for landing, you're going to want to slow the helicopter down. But there's one thing to be aware of when slowing the helicopter down, and that's vortex ring state. Basically getting caught in your own down downwash, where you no longer have effective air to lift the helicopter off the ground, no matter how much collective you put in. I'm going to get some altitude here and show you a little bit what vortex ring state or VRS looks like. The other problem with vortex ring state is you can lose altitude at a very high rate of speed, sometimes as fast as 6,000 feet per minute. That's a pretty rapid drop. So here we're over 1,000 feet. We're moving about 30 knots, and if we speed up a little bit. So if we come in like we're going to stop the helicopter abruptly and we flare the helicopter by pulling back on the cyclic abruptly, notice that our speed drops and as I pull collective, our vertical speed indicator starts to drop too. That wasn't a very good example of getting into VRS, so let's try it again. So we're moving at a rapid pace, and we stop. 
notice that we're shaking and there we're dropping I'm putting collective in and it catches it but that's because we move forward if we try and keep it level of course when I'm trying to get into VRS it doesn't want to do it there we go now we're dropping and I'm putting collective in and we're dropping even faster lower the collective a little bit point the nose forward and try and fly straight and it should recover from that there's another recovery method called the Bouchard technique I'll demonstrate that here 800 feet that should be relatively safe altitude so we're moving along in forward flight and we pitch back lower the collective to stop the helicopter and we're getting into VRS we're dropping rapidly so we input and swing left, right out of the downwash I was using my left pedal input and swinging right on the cyclic to basically do a side slip maneuver out of our downwash so with landing you definitely or any type of slowing you definitely want to be aware of VRS I'm not very good at trying to demonstrate it here and I apologize for that but VRS is something that is a very dangerous concept in uh, helicopter flying basically when you slow your helicopter down you want to do it kind of evenly and keep your rate of descent in control you don't want to descend too rapidly in fact a lot of people will say you don't want to descend at all when stopping you want to try and be pretty level flight when you're stopping And here we can go into a out of ground effect hover and avoid VRS. But notice, as in the uh, previous video when I was talking about in ground effect and out of ground effect, I have to apply a lot of collective to keep us airborne and hovering stationary out of ground effect. But it can be done. Then we can start moving forward and flying. So just remember, avoid VRS by reducing your airspeed too much and having a drop in altitude. And remember, avoid mass bumping by making smaller inputs on your control systems. And the cyclic shouldn't move too far. Um, if you're overcorrecting, which a lot of people do, you'll start to get some really weird teetering and movements where basically it's like a, a ball in a bowl where it'll keep moving back and forth. And you don't want to do that. You want to try and keep the helicopter in good control and avoid making abrupt motions. Because that'll also get into pendulum effect, where basically you lose stability and the helicopter keeps swinging and swinging, basically in the axis of the main rotor blades. And you definitely don't want to have that happen, because it makes, not just makes for an unstable helicopter, but also, especially if you're flying in VR, it can be very um, disorienting and slightly annoying. All right, so that'll do it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and I hope you guys stay safe out there.